Guardians get taken down. Anything really could have happened in that game. 50-50 was really what that Baron was if they didn't decide to peel off and go for the team fight. Because they had to go for the Baron. They had to force a 50-50 because Jax was pushing that bottom lane. And we shouldn't be going back to first game so much, but it was that recent and that important that really OMG's got to feel a little down after losing in that fashion. Let's have a look at game two here then. We see that Corky actually being banned out here by OMG. And mm -hmm. Uzi has proved that he's incredibly good. Not sure how strong he is on Corky though. We've not yeah. really seen too much of him uh, on that at, at any point really. On the other side, Aatrox banned out that Renekton taken away from Royal Club. They didn't want Go-Go in to pick that up first. And I'm thinking that there was a lot left up. I was thinking maybe they'll first pick Ari, but instead they just Shen. decided to go with the Shen. That's a... That's like your generic first pick. Yeah, in generic most of these first games. pick. Left open, he's going to yeah. be taken away, as is Zed. Hello. And Zed getting through is dangerous stuff. Yeah. We've seen how much of a ninja White's is when we uh, had a look back at that final play when he fell off his chair. Didn't fall, <laughs> he was just being a ninja. Uh, on the other side, Kale mm. coming out from this one very, very possibly. And Royal Club actually played the Kale uh, a little bit earlier on in the season yeah. in the playoffs actually uh, against IG. This time around though we're going to see it with OMG by the looks of it and against that Zed makes sense. Yeah, the last I saw was in the European regionals when Alex each actually played Kale against enemy Zed and was victorious in that one but that's the most we've seen of the so to speak like Kale counterpick. Lulu was a decent thing to pick against Zed as well because you can polymorph him after he goes in with his death mark to try and stop his damage. I'm actually just a little bit surprised about all the things that have been left up in this game because there were so many effective target bans or regional specific bans. Any ban, Corky has generally just been dealt with by a lot of these teams, not banned away. Renekton has not been a priority. But because of all that, we get the double ninjas in a game and now it's on OMG to react to the Zed. Sona Vayne locked in here as well. And if Uzi, you know, gets to the stage that he did in that last mm -hmm. one, that Vayne's going to be even more terrifying than what the Caitlyn was. Yeah, Vayne trying to dodge out from the Shen Taunts and the Ari Charms. How often do we get to see Ari fifth picked? Not very often. At the often. end of a team, yeah. I'm going to go with, I don't think it's happened in the World Championships. I don't think so. Let's just say it hasn't. Yeah. It, makes, it hasn't happened. Zero percent I don't think it's happened. I think we're good on so I was safe yeah. on that one. Ari has been so... Highly contested in these ones. If she's not banned out, she's definitely uh, in those first round of picks. On the other side, we saw the virus coming in for San and the Ari that we're already talking about. Looks like we could see a Vladimir or a Rumble or something else, but it will be a Rumble. <laughs> they're just overloading damage right now on Royal, and they have very low amounts of crowd control. So they're all about. You know, Royal has done this before. They overload their team with damage and then dive anyway because you can only run away for so long, even if you're not crowd controlled. They just chase you down like a mob. At least they'd have the move speed from Sona. Whereas OMG has a very conventional looking team composition. They have the Lulu to try and soft counter Zed a little bit. But aside from that, it's just the normal things we'd see from maybe even a non-Chinese team. I actually... Despite the huge crowd control gap in Royal, I fear their damage. And I'm excited to see Uzi on Vayne and whether he can just get going. Zed being let through, that's something that we've seen extremely rarely yeah. here. Uh, a couple of times, in fact. Actually, 50% win rate on that uh, on that Zed coming through, mm -hmm. uh, if my memory serves correctly. And the fact is, in the right hands, Zed right now is so in unbelievably strong. Yeah, and the thing that OMG would have going for them is since Royal picked it so early, OMG was able to at least build a decent amount of counters into it. They have giant shields coming in from both Shen and Lulu. So if the name in the game is single target assassination, it's actually not going to work out very well, which is why I think the Rumble pick from Royal also works because he's the one who's going to try and spread damage and get people low overall. This one's interesting, Joe. One more win, Royals just knocking OMG right out of the tournament, who was undefeated in the group stage until their very last game. Until their very last game, which was so one-sided, it almost didn't feel, feel real after what we'd seen from yeah. OMG on the previous days. Uh, but this would be uh, you know, a very big disappointment, and the fact that they came into the group stage losing out on that first seed, which would have put this, made this their first game of the tournament, as it is for Royal Club. And for them to go out at this stage, probably unthinkable uh, yeah. where before we started playing this best of three from their side of things. But they are behind and they have to win two games in a row now against Royal Club. So let's get into game and see how this one is all going to develop and whether we're going to see that level one action that we predicted in game one but didn't really see. Yeah, well in this case, 
it's OMG, who would have the crowd control advantage at level one? Usually when I just write off the level one and say it's not going to happen, is yeah, exactly happens. when it happens. Like game three of Cloud9 versus Fnatic yesterday where Fnatic was able to pick up a double kill. But right now these teams are putting up very defensive walls. It's a little curious that they have played each other so many times. Maybe they've kind of exposed all their level one strategies already. And since OMG recognized Royal was grouped up and OMG has the crowd control advantage, they're very willing to group up and try and get some ward control down. But with how many wards we saw last game, it didn't have a very large impact on the overall game. And I think these teams are familiar enough with each other that we're not going to see any action. You can see them. They're headed up towards that wolf camp. They, their path was spotted, but one thing that's not going to be spotted is the fact that they've all recalled from this one. This is going to take Royal a little bit of time to actually realize that it's happening. That's actually my favorite invade by teams. When they get spotted invading and then hide in a spot that they predict has not been warded because it puts an immense amount of unknown pressure on the enemy. At this point, Royal, you can already see they have to walk the long way around with Vayne and Sona to get to the bottom lane. Royal can no longer plan their, their jungle paths either because unless... Royal had a ward on OMG's blue buff right now. Lucky's not going to know what buff to path to next. He wants to go to blue, but it could actually be gone, in which case he'd be left with only one buff. Well, the good thing from their side is that they do have that ward kind of on the corner, so they will probably be able to predict uh, that Lovelin has, in fact, gone back for him. Either way, it's a dangerous little start here. Blue buff has already been done for Lovelin, actually smiting that one up. Can I get his wolves as well? So not going straight over to his second buff just yet. Yeah, 50-50, he guessed right, basically. Rural likes those 50-50s. They're pretty good at him so far. You can see the laners, at least from the one of the 1v2, aren't, uh, aren't showing their faces quite yet. In fact, Go Going was giving a very... What was he doing? He was just giving an extended pull on the red buff, as far as I could tell. Uh, another 2v1 lane setup, and I think that favors Uzi. Vayne wants to be able to farm like this. Yeah, farm is something that is certainly going to have plenty of the rewards down on this bottom side. So lovely, not going to be able to get around without being spotted. And he is going to be coming over that side here. And he's going to try and get involved, but there's already that ward right there. He's spotted already at this stage. Yeah, so the jungler's not making too much noise early. Anything could happen at any moment. We know how quickly Loveland likes to go and gank. And in the first game, it was actually Uzi and Tabe who did not respect the Jax or Go going in that 2v2 lane and paid heavily for it by giving up a kill to Lee Sin. Lee Sin's lane presence in those 2v2s is perhaps the greatest of all junglers. So when Lee Sin goes to babysit, it's actually kill pressure down in that bottom lane. See Lucky coming across to this top side here. They know that Lovelin's there. He's actually showed himself straight away as he came through that lane. And it will have to uh, get a taunt out, basically, for Gil going to get something started in that one. Lucky doing the same here on that top side. Actually, a lot of damage here coming on towards Big Pamela, but I see Lucky just repelling away from it. Yeah, one thing about the Rumble in the 1v2 is he doesn't actually have nearly as much kill pressure because he cannot chain any significant crowd control aside from his slows to really lock someone down. Basically, they're just trying to help each other's 1v2s farm, and I think Shen and Lee Sin are better suited for that as far as the lane matchups go. Oh, Big Pomelo again getting a bit caught up in this top lane. He's gonna go very low, has to flash away from that one. Royal not committing wow. to it afterwards, but Big Pomelo feeling the pressure here. Hey, if Lucky keeps landing those stuns, even if they don't have the better lane matchup, they're going to win out in that 2v2 because Loveland has not been landing his resonating strikes in this bottom lane against Uzi and Tabe. And the fact is that Uzi can knock them straight back as Go going. Ooh. Has a bit of an attempt there, and he's going to take a lot of damage for the pleasure. Gets that shield out of Lee Sin, but that third silver bolt going in there as White's here. Going to take him very, very low. The ignite was put on him, but he will be able to walk away from that one with his shadows. Meanwhile, San in his top side going super low, Ooh. and there's the first blood. And San not even using his flash there as he falls. Now Tabe in trouble. He's a dead man. Lovely may go down. This is a short kill for Uzi. No! no. no. No, but he flashes in there, picks out, but now the turret's attacking him. He needs to be able to knock back Go Go in here, who lands the taunt, gets the kill, and that leaves us at 2 2. These lanes what? just exploding with action. What the heck just happened right there? It was a 1 for 0 and a 1 for 2. Both of those 2v2s just decided to fight. We knew there was kill pressure from the Lee Sin, 
and the Shen underestimated the kill pressure from Lucky and Godlike. Wow. Wow. Lucky's been landing those cocoons. Yeah. And that's a, a very big part Rather of that key. one in there as well. <laughs> San goes down, used his barrier, didn't use flash. Now, it's never good to be using your flash if you're not going to get in there as White's here. It's going to exchange some damage with Cool. Never good to burn that flash without being sure that you're going to need to. Mm. But also, on the other hand, better safe than sorry. Yeah, I'd agree with the better safe than sorry when you're playing teams as aggressive as these guys. As far as the mid lane goes, Whites has actually been forced into a fairly defensive item build right now. He's started with two Doran's items. I really feel like Cool has the early upper hand on him in this one. In the last matchup when Whites was playing Vladimir, he stuck with Cool Zari quite well. But I think one too many charms have hit Whites early on. And since the junglers have been completely occupied by babysitting or it's not really babysitting, kill laning against the AD carry and support, it's allowed Cool to take a little bit of an upper hand in that mid lane. Just saw that. that Lucky was hanging around as that wave was pushed right back on towards Godlike's tower, but this time decided to back off and not stay around from that one. Very low farm when it comes to those jungles at this point. We've seen why. Here is Lee Sin actually headed down to that bottom lane as well. So Lovely gonna be doing pretty much the same as we saw before. We'll see if they can actually get in and pick up any kills again. And Ari, since she was six first and pushed up, can now threaten this bottom lane. Royal is in big trouble. Yeah, Tabe in a lot of trouble from this one. They're gonna focus down Uzi. He cleanses instantly out of the charm. Now though, Tabe, is he gonna be able to escape? The Torn not quite landing. Lovely Whoa. going though. Cool managing to pick up the kill there with a last tick of damage. These guys are rather skilled right there. Uzi actually hit cool mid shadow dash to negate one of his spells, but then he got both procs of his REQ to actually finish off Tabe. Very nearly a desperate save. Oh, here comes the Stan United. Stan, is he going to be able to get down and then get that kill? Lucky Repel, Godlike now getting caught out. Go going, taking a lot of damage. There's the arrow going through. Not really doing too much damage to Godlike. And again, a very close scenario in this top lane. And Godlike really wants to hit level 6 here because if he could, it would prevent this dive. But since he is not, he has to be extremely scared. Once he gets that creep, he can save himself. But OMG is looking to make something happen here. He's 6. So close. There is the level 6 turret. Not quite down Ooh. just yet. Godlike here is going to get Dover Pod. He is going to get finished off by San. There is the equalizer coming down, but it's not going to be enough damage, or is it? Here comes White. San going to get popped. Big Pomelo going to be the next target. He gets slowed down by the Glitter Lance. Meanwhile, Lucky. On the other side, going in for it. Double kill comes out by White. And in the end, we see that Lee Sin coming up there to help things out. Don't want to take on White's and Zed. But again, crazy, crazy, crazy stuff, Jeff. That's the way these guys play. Absolute chaos. And because Go Going came up to support that, it actually gives Royal the eventual larger win by getting the mid turret with Uzi and Tabe. So, turret. Going to be finishing off a lot of minions here. Who's he not wanting to give any kind of free farm over? Meanwhile, White making sure that this top turret still survives. If we look where we are in the game as that first turret goes down now, tied on kills, just that one turret down, but it's not a massive gold lead or anything that they've managed to pick up. If we look at the farm, it's decently even across all lanes as well. Yeah, this game is rather good. Right here, White is now kind of transition lanes with Rumble because they've lost themselves in the rotations. You can tell OMG wants to lock them down for a little bit of damage here. It's a tall task to kill Whites, but if he commits deeply, <laughs> whoops, give a little juke there. Yeah, but I, I envy people that can do that. Their reaction sure. times are almost preemptive as far as this goes, especially Uzi in yeah. the couple clips I've seen. He is tumbling sometimes before people use spells for him. We saw, seeing the cleansers on him, like getting out of a charm the second that it actually lands on him. We saw a Dragon being started off there, but Royal actually starting to back away. They've used that pink ward to make sure that they've got vision control at that bottom side. Right now, OMG actually pushing back for a turret here, and they're going to yeah. take the mid out of the turret. Yeah, Godlike probably should have stayed to defend that turret, but he was roaming down for other tasks, and I feel like having the mid lane turret down for Royal but the bottom lane turret down for OMG is an advantage for OMG. It will specifically give Lovelin 
more territory to roam through if he tries to set up any counter jungle or dive opportunities for OMG, as well as because Cool has been able to have the upper hand on Whites. The farther Ari can shove up the lane, the longer Ari can disappear for it, and the more overall map pressure that creates. So let's have a look down some of the items here. San actually picking up that Phage here first. So we'll see. Oh, he's got to be headed Trinity Force at some point with that one, obviously. We'll I wonder. That that's goes. the Genja special right there. Yeah, the Phage, Phage first, Ferris. and then just a bit of randomness around it. I really wonder whether San's going to be going for a Trinity Force Varus, because so many Varus have just been going for the Bloodthirster into the Last Whisper. Trinity Force is just a whole new ball game. I really wonder what San's going to go with that. Now, this mid lane that we've been uh, looking at here, obviously White's getting those, that double kill in the top lane, really starting things off nicely to him. He was taking a lot of damage from Cool a little bit earlier Ooh. on. Godlike is in trouble. He's going to get kicked into the taunt. Meanwhile, Royal Club use that distraction in the top lane to start themselves off that dragon again. Yeah, and that was just Loveland sneaking in because the mid turret is down, but Royal getting the dragon. Maybe the fight turns top by Lance Crescendo. Wow, Tabby going very low, but cool. He's going to get burst out from this one. Uzi picks up that kill. Whites is going to finish on Big Pamela, no problem. And now San, he's a dead man. Uzi going to get the finish on that to get a double kill, but is it over? Go going. He's chased down here. Lucky, where's the cocoon? Flash away from Go going, gets him back to safety. Brilliant pickup from Royal. Huge play by Royal there, especially because of the kill distribution. It's three kills on White and three kills on Uzi. That is exactly what they need. If those two get going, the game is effectively over, and they are so close to getting farmed. Tabe almost baited that in because he had allowed a three-man crescendo, and again, San thought he had the kill and did have the kill. I thought he got away. <laughs> the rest <laughs> of the Royal came all the way over the top. You could see Uzi's chase potential. The best veins always end fights in the front because they move so well. And now with Blade of the Ruined King and Berserker's Greaves completed for Uzi, I think OMG's in trouble. OMG are in trouble. 1-0 behind in this best of three in case you're just joining us and uh, didn't see game number one. And Royal Club are in the driving seat from this one as well. OMG need to find something to get back into this game. Let's have a look down those items once again because the haunting guy's just been finished off there for Godlike in the top lane. On the other side, Shen not got that Sunfire Cape quite done. Yeah, and both of these side laners or top laners have really sacrificed this game. They are incredibly low on farm because it is completely an arms race between Uzi and San. If and I think it totally works in the favor of Royal because I think Godlike does much better with low farm than a Shen does. If Go Going doesn't get farm, Uzi is just going to melt through him. And that farm distribution is huge for Royal once again. And Uzi now with that Blade of the Ruin King done. It's not something they want to go 1v1 with. And there was Uzi with that Blade of the Ruin King. Yep. He's now down for this one. Royal Club were pushing that mid lane there. Nice pick off from OMG. Yeah, that was him just getting hit by Cleanse. It was the map control that they had lost because the mid turret was down. You can check, he got hit by the charm. He had his Cleanse, but actually chose not to use it because he figured he was dead to rights in that situation. And now, OMG gets engaged. Oh, White's going straight in there, gets kicked off to the side, but cool, gonna go low from that one. Not quite got the damage to finish off. And OMG able to walk away, almost getting that pick that they just lost out on back for themselves. Yeah, White is actually sitting on 2,000 gold, but because Uzi was down, they wanted to keep his presence on the map and push this middle lane. But it's tough to push against that cool wave core. Yeah, wave instantly obliterated and not able to get down. Meanwhile, Godlike finally having a bit more time here in this bottom lane to get his farm back up to that of what his opposite number is. Go, go in there. He's been on that top side of the map now. I'll put 81 CS and we'll be finishing off that Sunfire Cape here with that trip home. Yeah, I think that Sunfire Cape is rather huge for Go Going. I don't know if it's enough yet to deal with Uzi. Godlike as well farming away in this bottom lane, having to really just sacrifice so much and hold against two people almost the entire game so that the rest of Royal can go and make plays. I'm really expecting Royal to try and force some team fights soon, and I have to see whether their lack of crowd control prevents them from forcing the right team fights and how willing OMG is to commit to these dragon fights. Because I feel like when you're running a team with low amounts of crowd control, you force fights by running at objectives and basically baiting the other team towards you. That's the only way you get to get your mitts on. 
So Red Bull heading over here to shout out to Sam. Cool, clearing out that midway. He's now got that needlessly large rod in there. We can see that San almost got that Trinity Force finish. So it's not quite Another on the try. same path as what Gendry is. White going very low from this one. There is Stan United actually coming down. And that's an easy kill and another pick from OMG. Cool is really making that RE work. As long as he can land charms while Royal is trying to split push a little bit and get Uzi going, it's going to create power plays for OMG. Royal was completely on the other lanes right there and it's making it difficult for them to collapse in for this one. There's the equalizer though, trying to desperately save that turret. The fight turns. Yeah, they need to be careful from this one there. Is the ultimate coming out from San? Not quite able to lock them all up with that one. Are Royal going to be able to close in and pick up some kills from it? Nope. OMG, walk away. Pretty simply. Yeah, very contented just taking the turret despite getting the Varus ultimate onto Lucky in a potential 2v5. OMG really showing their focus on objectives so far with that play. So can they take the turret here? See, Royal wants men. to get a fight here. They recognize the cool Zarya ultimate is going to be up again soon, and this is finally Royal being grouped up. If they could get OMG to engage on them somehow, they could then use their double blade of the Ruin Kings and actually go for a big team fight. But you can see OMG is just not having it. Not having any of that one. The cleanse is available for Uzi as well. Didn't use it in that last fight, and that could be crucial when the taunts and the charms start coming their way. There's a cocoon thrown out from Lucky, who's been pretty damn accurate with them so far. Not quite landing it this time around. Go going, they'll just tank up a little bit of damage there as they try to get rid of this wave, and Royal not able to get in there again. At the very least, we're going to see Royal force down for a dragon here and maybe go in for a 50-50. Lucky loves going for those 50-50s as far as Dragon is concerned. And once again, OMG might be trying to do a split push, and since Royal has already lost two inner turrets, they almost can't commit for that. Uzi pops his ult to chase, and I don't know if they can get anything. Yeah, going after Cool there, who used the ultimate of his own. That Dragon is available now, but neither team really choosing to go down there. Royal finally, with the ulti away from Cool, know that they could maybe head off for this one. Lovely actually coming over the wall there. That's a very dangerous move from him. Yeah, shielded up by Lulu. There's White's actually coming in. Wild Growth goes down. Go going. He's getting obliterated. There's a three by Crescendo coming in as well. Tabe picks up a kill, but they're only going one way right now. San taking tons of damage there as he falls. They're still chasing here as well. Lovely. Can he get away from this one? Tumble comes down, and that's a wow. triple kill for the Vayne. Five for zero, a clean ace. Even though that initiation seemed forced by Royal, that's how confident they are in their team fighting capabilities. They take the turret, they're all low, but everybody on OMG is dead. This could be an 18 minute Baron they take. Let's check out how this fight works. Whites got popped up during his death mark, but because of that, it made OMG creep in. Notice how Cool and San move forward right as that crescendo was landing. It's exactly what Royal needed. And then like all good veins, Uzi, near the front of the team for this last team fight. Knows the last auto attack will kill, so he automatically moves on to Loveland, gets that kill as well, and that is the monster swing in this game. Monster swing, Baron is taken down there by Royal. And we talk, we wondered, is the Sona Crescendo going to be enough crowd control? And Jack, if you hit three Ooh. people with it, it's enough. Absolutely, it's enough. Tabe with huge plays. He was 0-6 on Annie in the last game, but he landed the Tibbers when it was required. And he is putting himself in harm's way just so he can land these crescendos. And we were talking so much as this dragon's actually going to maybe be contested. I'll tell my story later. Let's see if OMG can get it alive. Well, I'm going to pick it up, and there is the All right. ward over the back. Story time. Because we were wondering how Royal got this number one seed, in a sense, because OMG was so dominant during the regular season. They won the winner bracket final in the Chinese regionals, and then they got 3-0'd by Royal in that finals match. And we were wondering, does it really mean anything? Maybe OMG was off their game that day. Maybe Royal is just that good. And now Royal, one game away from making it in. Yeah, Cool's dead. He's not getting away from that one. Deathmark coming down to finish him off from Whites. And this is an inner turret. Baron is on. They're regening every last bit of damage that's coming in from that last one. They could crowbar their way through for the in-hip. As soon as they got Baron in the last match, they went to end the game. And they are just powerfully pushing down this middle inhibitor. They have to wait for the next creep wave. But OMG is really scared right now. Yeah, in our prep, we you know, watching a lot of these games between these two teams, 
we found we tried to find the real differences between them and one of them was that omg after picking up objectives did generally better pushing yep. out the wins and maps but royal club if they were feeling they had any problems with that they don't see them in this game. In that first game, they finished it off. In this one, they're looking for the damage as well as they go in towards Loveland. There's a wild growth put down very early. Royal Club going to start to just back away from it. They took the inhib on that push. They got what they came for. They're now up three turrets and 5,000 gold, but they got what they came for. They want more. Hiding behind OMG, going for them. Oh, Tabe actually getting charmed in there. Is the cocoon on towards Loveland. Oh, managing to get away somehow. Go -Go in is going to TP off to him as well with that Sun United. Meanwhile, Lucky diving into the back there to try and lock out Big Pomelo. And another crazy encounter yeah. with no kills. Well, here's the trick. If the crescendo doesn't land and OMG stays out of range of it, OMG can just disengage like that. They have the Shen kick that can go away. They have the kite from Varus' spells, and they have Lulu's kiting ability as well. The whole reason that OMG ate that ace in the mid lane was because they half committed to Royal's engagement initially, and then Royal was then able to chase them down. So it's still actually fairly difficult to Royal to control their engagements, but with this lead, they can brute force things down. Oh, see them pushing in now towards this inner turret. In the top lane, still very, very cautious about where they put this pressure and how much they actually put down Loveland. Losing a lot of health there. And I think one thing that we also have to, uh, that can't really forget is the crescendo, just the threat of it actually. Mm -hmm. When it's not being used and it's off cooldown, they know that it's available. ONG yep. have to be even more cautious then uh, than a little bit later on when it's already down. And games like this are actually very hingent on flash crescendos as well, but it's still on cooldown for Tabe. And I'm actually a little surprised at Rose Caution here. They typically have one more wave of minions to come through for this. I wonder if they're going to try to flank around the side or brute force down on this last minion wave that they have with the Baron buff still being on them. OMG is holding this very dangerous turret right here. Royal's last chance. Okay, hold on a little bit longer to that turret. The minion wave in mid, as you rightly pointed out, is starting to push through. They're gonna have to deal with that here. And we can already see that Cool has left the rest mm -hmm. of his team, and he's going to be going back for that one. Four-man defense would be very risky from oh, that one. Done. We are going to see Go going. There is a crescendo coming down. Go going gets a wild growth, but well, he's not going to escape that one. A kill for Uzi, and this vein is causing them all kinds of problems. Finally, Cool going to come back in. Uzi going very low. Cleanses off there right at the end. Weiss is actually going to die, but that is the turret somehow surviving. Everyone from Royal low, and White's dead. Well, Royal actually decided to dive without any minions. They didn't care about the creep wave because OMG was so good at clearing it with Varus and Ari. You could see they locked down Go Going, the tankiest member of that Royal team, and it did give OMG a little bit of time. You could see the Lee Sin kick back on Uzi stopped the initial chase, and since Cool was actually off to peel minions, he arrived right at this moment. He did not get his ignite off onto Uzi, which meant the cleanse could end up saving him and stopping. I guess it didn't stop any damage at the end from Cool. It meant it was a two for one instead of a two for two. So, OMG managing to hold out to the turret. We'll see how long they can do that for. Is that red buff taken down? Baron coming up in less than two minutes. Dragon's on its way through in one and a half as well. So that means we're probably in for some more action. So let's mm -hmm. have a quick look down some of those items coming out here right now. Phantom Dancer now added into the Blade of the Ruin King, along with that quick Silver Sash coming out as well now for Uzi. Yeah, Uzi's QSS is going to do a lot of work for him because he knows his cleanse is down, and it's going to give him a little bit of cool durability right there. It means cool most likely won't be able to 100 to 0 Uzi, and knowing if he can position properly, it would then allow him to clean up fights his main. But OMG going for the fights, they have the man advantage. Oh, lovely, and actually going very deep. Cool gonna go over towards Sammy. There's a Stan United being used oh, very, very them. early. Uzi is coming in from the backside. Surprise, here comes the vein. Kill for White. Sam's not gonna escape this one. They focus down Uzi, but look at him. He's still alive. He's still surviving. He stays alive. Ace for Royal Club. What a an amazing fight coming out of Oh them. my Uzi. god, right there. Royal just aced OMG. They beat them four times in a row. They're going for five. They have minions in the mid lane. Super minions, in fact. They're going for the win. They're going for the win. And honestly, 15 seconds for most of the players to come back up into this game. This is going to be a win for Royal Club. They are going to take down their Chinese rivals. Two to zero. Amazing performance. The Zed, the Vayne. Too much for them to handle this time around, and you can see.
see exactly what it means to Royal Club. So much emotion for them coming in. They had to watch OMG go 7-1 and one in the group stage, and then they had to draw them to play in the quarterfinals. They are longtime rivals from the Chinese LPL. They beat them three times in a row to gain that number one seed, and then with that bye into the quarterfinals, they beat them twice more in a row to move on. Well deserved by Royal. And we so talked about the whole strategy that you saw Uzi that pink keyboard, honestly a big key to his victory here. The fact is, they had to protect him. Protect the puppy is what they needed to do, and that's exactly what they did. In fact, yeah. if we look at that last fight, he kind of protected He's himself. He was just on his own at the back, surprised them, and oh, they were man. able to rip straight through. Amazing performance by Royal Club, and I guess that really does silence the naysayers who said yeah. that OMG should be number one seed coming out of China because yeah. Royal Club have just beaten them twice in a row, very convincingly. 25 minutes in this last game. You can hear the ovation from the crowd there. And you're absolutely right, Uzi, he's crazy too because he just, he was going into four or five people. Yes, they were low, but he calculates exactly what he can do. This is a scary Royal team now because they fight more frequently than anyone else. I cannot wait to see their matchup against Fnatic now because that is two very distinct play styles going against each other. That's gonna be absolutely amazing, isn't yeah. it? I mean, ONG were the team, I think to beat from both groups, actually. I mean, seemed like it. They, they seem to be the team. I think a lot of people favored them maybe for this whole tournament after seeing what they did in the groups. There is Uzi on your screen, certainly enjoying a moment that he definitely should enjoy because wow. what a victory. OMG, as we said, seven and one in the group stage, despite that, Horrible loss to SKTT1 in their final group stage game. It didn't look like the same team that we'd seen for the other ones. And they've just been absolutely dominated by Royal Club. Yeah, wow is really the last thing I can say to sum this one up. Because we know how strong OMG was. We know the rivalry between these two teams. And now Royal's story just becomes so amazing because they stormed through the end of their regionals to get the number one seed. And they felt, and Tabe said he felt so bad and upset about drawing the other team because he was expecting that to be, you know, their main challenge coming in. They took care of that pretty easily. Their weaknesses as well coming in, saying that Royal wasn't able to capitalize on their advantages very quickly. They would kind yeah. of meander around in the mid game after forcing so many team fights. But now that they know how to play the early game and know how to force fights, if they can end games the way they just did against OMG, they are incredibly dangerous since we're down to only four teams now in the World Championships. Yeah, and that's the, and I talked about it in the middle of the game that that was the one concern that we had. That was the one thing that, for, for, from our eyes, really put OMG above Royal Club for this one because mm -hmm. they did do so well after winning team fights to push through. Royal Club kind of hanging around and seeming a little bit dithery in terms of yeah. where they were going and what they were doing, but that, that wasn't present in this game whatsoever. We saw in game number one, they just shoved up that lane with the super minions coming back to their inhib that they lost while they were picking up that Baron mm -hmm. and pushed it straight through and took the win right there. And they've done the same here. Pick up an ace. Of course, it makes yep. it easier when you pick up an ace to do that <laughs> and just walk straight through into the base. But no messing around straight to the point. Get the game won. 2-0 yep. against OMG. Amazing. And 20 kills to 9 in the last one. It only took them 25 minutes and yep. 20 seconds. That is so dominating. I just... I'm very glad now that they made it through, just because a team that plays this aggressively, I just need to see more of. We know now Uzi is a god on AD carries, as far as it goes. What are teams gonna do to slow him down? And you can't take away from the rest of the team because Whites was always right in there with him. The whole team played great. Amazing victory there. And well, we know our second fi uh, semi-final matchup now is China's Royal Club are gonna take on Europe's Fnatic. Yeah, and also, if you want to see that semi-final, 